Today, I will show you a horror, thriller, war film from 2020, titled Ghosts of War. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. In Nazi-occupied France at the end of WW2, an American squadron of soldiers is seen sleeping. In the woods. One of them, Chris, has a nightmare and when he wakes up he sees someone looking over them. From the adjacent tree. The apparition keeps looking at Chris who gets more unnerved and grabs at his pistol. It cocks its own pistol, which prompts Chris to ask what it wants, expecting it to shoot him, but when he reopens his eyes, the apparition has vanished. The following morning, Chris and his squad are preparing to leave for an outpost, where they are expected to arrive. Kirk is dealing with an insane rash from his socks and asks Bucci if he has a spare pair, only to be met by ridicule from both him and Eugene. The conversation ends with an argument between Kirk and Eugene, which gets interrupted by Chris ordering the squad to move out. During their walk to the outpost, the soldiers hear an incoming jeep, then crouch down and wait to ambush it with grenade launchers. The jeep gets blown up by the squad and then they go over to it to pick off the remaining soldiers. Tapert takes out the SS patch from an officer as a trophy and pulls one of his golden teeth out. Kirk kills a survivor from the explosion as Bucci looks for maps and coded messages. Kirk finds another survivor who seems to be in better shape than the rest of his men. When they realize he's a major, Bucci decides to box him, however, he doesn't seem too interested. And calls the others pigs for looting his men's things. Another survivor wakes up, and Bucci bashes his head in which makes the major change his. Mind about fighting so the two of them start swinging punches at each other. The Nazi Major seems to be a bit better in hand-to-hand -hand combat, so Chris comes over and kills him. Then, Chris turns to his men and orders them to back up because he realized that they made a wrong turn on the way. Before they leave, Tapert also takes one of the Nazis' coats. As they walk through the countryside, they hear someone in the woods in front, so the squad stops and waits until they see a group of refugees come out of hiding. The group continues on their journey and Tapert runs out to them as a woman with a child waits for him. He gives her the coat, the gold teeth he has collected, and the SS patch. The squad continues their journey to the outpost through flaming villages and the desolate countryside when Chris tells them that the outpost they are going to is actually a castle that they have to safeguard. When they arrive at the castle, the squad sees one of the other guards sleeping in a jeep outside. They wake him up and he immediately runs in, calling to his men that they can finally leave. The squad walks into the castle to see the other men hurrying to get out of there as soon as they can. Before they leave, Bucci asks them to leave their radio in the castle. Chris is suspicious about why they are in such a hurry to leave since the place is so nice and the commanding officer tells him that some of them would like to make furlough so he lets them leave. Later, the men are making lunch in the kitchen, when Chris decides to take a look around the house, something Eugene is already doing. He finds a piano and sits down to play. The music echoes through the empty castle and all of its messed up nooks and crannies. Chris walks inside the main study only to find a massive burn mark on the floor where the chair used to be, and then he hears some strange noises coming from the vents unable to make out what they are. Bucci hears someone in the bathroom and goes to check on it, finding the door locked. And as he walks away, the door opens. They all gather in the den later, eating and relaxing, when they hear strange noises, prompting them to get their weapons and check it out. Tapert and Bucci take the main staircase and check all the doors on the second floor. Kirk and Chris hear the sound close to them, but they can't make out what it is as they walk into a room with covered up things. They get to the kitchen and realize the noise is coming from the other room and as they prepare to enter it, the doors abruptly open. Both men continue to the other room when they reach drapes, cordoning out the next one. Once they pull the drapes, Kirk and Chris see someone hanging in front of the window, who disappears when the wind blows the covers away. 
Later that night, the men sit in front of the fire and tell each other ghost stories. While Tapard is looking out the windows through his scope, Eugene tells them about a journal he found in the basement that belonged to an 18-year-old Nazi who took over the house. Suddenly, they all hear knocking noises coming from the fireplace and Chris tells them that. It sounds like Morse code, so Eugene deciphers it into the sentence, I have no legs. The sound stops abruptly. Chris orders his men to rest, but stay cautious. He tells Tapert to take the attic because it's the best vantage point to tell if someone is coming. Eugene is in the basement and he's trying to open a chest before giving up and sitting down on it. He sees a photo of the family that lived in the castle and reads about them in the Nazi soldier's journal. Suddenly, his candle goes out. He tries his lighter as something appears behind him for a moment and when he lights, the candle again, he sees that the family has disappeared from the photo. Tapherd sets up with a rifle on the attic window. He takes a look through his scope when somebody appears behind him in the room. As he's observing through the scope, he sees a hanged man for a moment, then gone the next. Tapherd keeps looking when suddenly a ghost boy appears right in front of his view, scaring him. There's a bang on the wardrobe behind him too. Tapert goes outside to check more closely until he notices Chris staring at him from inside the castle. The next day, Eugene, Kirk, and Chris sit on the balcony and talk about how fast the previous squad wanted to get out of there. Eugene tells the others a story about Tapert that happened when they were in Paris. He'd found Tapert sitting in a pool of blood, surrounded by the carved up bodies of 17 age Hitler youth kids. Tapert was sitting with a string in his hands as if he were playing cat's cradle with someone. And with a scary look in his eyes. Chris says that he's glad Tapert is on their side when he suddenly shows up on the balcony. Tapert tells them that the last squad wanted to get out of there because they heard a radio. Transmission about 50 German soldiers passing by the castle on their way to Strasbourg. He advises his comrades that they should hide in the woods until they pass, but Chris thinks. They should safeguard the castle. Tapert says that he'll go to the attic to try to spot them in time and tells Eugene to join him. Once there, they begin to prepare it when they find a pentagram on the floor under the rug. Eugene's theory is that the Nazis must have killed the people that lived in the house in a ritualistic way, explaining it with Hitler's obsession with the occult. They don't discuss it further and begin moving the wardrobe from one side of the room to the other. When the wardrobe touches the pentagram, its door closes onto Eugene's fingers, breaking them. He thinks that Tapert did it on purpose and pushes him toward the wardrobe. When he looks into the mirror, he sees the reflection of a hanged woman. Later, Eugene, Chris, and Kirk listen to one of the frequencies on the radio when they Hear something extra eerie. A woman's voice can be heard saying that they are coming for them. They all agree that the castle might be haunted and Kirk suggests they should leave even before. The Nazis come. Suddenly, Morse code can be heard coming from the fireplace again. Eugene deciphers it as, if you leave. And as he's writing something takes over his hand. And finishes the line with, you will die. That night, the squad prepares for the arrival of the Nazi troops, with Tapert in the attic. And the rest, hiding behind a barricade near the entrance. When the Nazis get there Tapert spots them and signals the rest while the troops gather. Outside and surround the castle. They try to enter, but since the doors are locked, they get back in their trucks and prepare. To leave when a loud banging noise from the attic can be heard. The Nazis come back and begin to attack the castle with Tapert only able to take one of them out at a time. Suddenly, they throw a grenade in front of the barricade and Bucci jumps on it, taking its full hit. Chris gets thrown across the room, so he gets up dizzy and confused, but still shooting whatever Nazi he can see. More Nazis come inside and Chris runs to the basement, hiding under the stairs and allowing himself ample cover to sneakily attack the officers following him. Meanwhile, 
Eugene hides in the study when he hears someone behind him and then strange voices coming from the vent. He gets his gun ready to shoot but when he jumps from behind the desk he faces no Nazi but a ghost that abruptly bursts into flames. A German soldier finds Bucci's decimated body in the hallway as well as a second one lying next to him. He checks the second body when Chris turns and kills him and the two others that show up. Kirk is hiding in the bathroom when he hears drowning noises and children's laughter. He looks over to the tub and sees a Nazi soldier drowning in it. Tapperd hears something in the attic and follows it, only to find a Nazi hanging in the middle of the room. The following morning, the squad is gathered around Bucci and consider giving him enough morphine to end his suffering if necessary. Chris orders them to take the bodies of the Nazis outside and when Eugene and Kirk bring them over to the truck, they are horrified by the sight of what Tapert has done with them. Later, they talk about hauntings and ghosts when Eugene suddenly figures out that everything they experienced in the house was something that the Nazis did to the family that lived in the castle. The family met a gruesome end the day the Nazis came to their home. The father was burned alive, tied to a chair in the study. The son was drowned in front of his mother's eyes and the daughter was hanged from the rafters in the attic. Their bodies were never buried, so Chris asks if that's the reason why they became ghosts. Eugene goes to check on Bucci. While there, he gets scared by Tapert, who joins him and tells him his version of the Paris story with the Hitler youth. Eugene realizes that not everything can be easily explained and that Tappert's story carries a different kind of weight, which he dug up when he reminded him of the story earlier. Later, Chris has a nightmare about the tub, in which a ghost appears to him and tries to drown him. While being pulled into the water, he sees three masked soldiers that turn into nurses and back to soldiers before he wakes up. The next day, they tend to Bucci and talk about leaving the castle, even in the face of being court-martialed for leaving their posts. Chris and Eugene go back to the basement to search for anything that might have belonged to the family. Eugene goes to find his lighter and Chris finds the journal, only he sees that the pages are empty. When Eugene comes back, he acts all ominously about it, then Kirk suddenly calls them to come back. Bucci is awake and keeps saying that this isn't real and that it was them. Before he dies, he grabs Chris and tells him to remember. That night, the remaining squad members discuss leaving the castle again. Chris says that they should bury the bodies of the family first and asks to see the journal. To find information. The pages are suddenly filled with writing again. Eugene tells him that he'll check the journal for clues as to where the bodies are, but says that they should leave the castle first. The boys bury Bucci in the garden before they leave. Walking back to base camp, they see a trashed ambulance on the road as well as the same group of refugees as before. They keep going further and talk about the possibility of being trapped in the afterlife until they pass by a strange building. Later, they reach the same ambulance and decide to turn around. The squad walks back through the destroyed city they passed before and sleeps in the woods that night. Tapert has a dream that he's being hanged from the rafters in the attic, but he wakes in the woods and sees the word Vetrelec next to his sleeping bag. The next day, the squad passes by the ambulance again and when they turn around they are faced with the bodies of the Nazis they killed earlier. Eventually, they arrive back at the castle, thinking that it won't let them leave. That night, Chris thinks that he can communicate with the spirits and find out where they are. Buried. Tapert says the word Vetrelec and Eugene remembers reading it in the Nazi journal. It's an old Muslim curse, stating that if you let evil happen, it can come back to haunt. You tenfold. That night, the men wait for the ghosts to show up and communicate. Footsteps appear before them and are headed straight for Chris, stopping before him. He sees a ghost that grabs him and starts dragging him to another part of the estate. Chris begs them to shoot the ghost and even though he can't see it, Tapert still shoots. In the direction of the ghost.
The others follow Chris to the other house and when they enter something strange begins happening to them and they see images from a different place in time, then they find Chris next to the bodies of the family. Later, the soldiers bury the bodies and find the last page of the journal stuck to the father. Eugene reads the last journal entry that says that the family wasn't French, but an Afghan, and that they risked their lives to save as many Jews as they can. The page also says that the mother performed a Vetrolet curse on the Nazi soldiers, haunting them to the grave. Later at the castle, Eugene remembers another entry in the journal and reads it again, saying that the words have changed, now reading that burying the bodies only gave the ghosts the power to return from the dead. Suddenly, the lights go out and as Tapert sits in the middle of the pentagram on the attic, the ghosts show up in the castle. They each attack one soldier and the men try to combat and shoot them, but nothing works against them. All of a sudden, the ghosts begin to glitch and the mutilated body of Bucci appears to Chris, telling him that this isn't real. Then a ghost takes him to a mirror, telling him to remember. Chris wakes in the present, surrounded by nurses and a doctor, then takes a look around the room and sees his fallen comrades. He pulls his covers away to see that he has no legs and the doctor tells him that his memories will come back in a few moments. Chris begins to remember that he was actually a soldier in Afghanistan and that his squad was supposed to save a doctor that was helping the Americans. Their mission was to extract him to a safe house in Kabul. In the present, the doctor tells him that they are in a facility hooked to a computer. Simulation made to help soldiers recover from PTSD as their injuries heal. Chris goes into another memory where Tapert is talking to two boys playing Cat's Cradle and giving one of them a toy meant for his son. The squad enters the home and the contact with the doctor tells the family that they have to leave immediately when he gets a message that the extraction won't be possible since enemy combatants are coming to the house. He tells the doctor to hide them in the wall, but the squad doesn't want to leave the family to get slaughtered, though they still listen to his orders. The enemy combatants arrive and immediately begin voicing their suspicions about the doctors. Possible collaboration with the Americans. The men grab the children as the mother begs them to let them go. Nevertheless, they still drown the boy and hang the daughter as the soldiers watch from behind the hiding spot, having already decided that there are too many of them to engage with. Lastly, they soak the father in kerosene and burn him while the squad does nothing. After the enemy leaves, Tapert sees that the little boys have also been killed. As soon as the squad is out of the house, the mother comes out screaming with a bomb. And even though Bucci tackles her, they all blow up. Chris comes back to reality and asks the doctor why they did what they did. He explains that they had to create a sim in which they were in WW2 but in no immediate danger. Bucci woke up one day for unknown reasons and when he saw his body, he simply died. Chris thinks that everything that they saw and heard in the castle was them sending subliminal messages to themselves. He also tells the doctor that something is wrong with the simulation and asks about Vetrolek. The nurse tells him that they all said the word at one point or another when the soldier remembers the moments after the explosion with the mother saying the word Vetrolek to him. Suddenly, the lights begin to flicker in the facility and the ghosts appear there as well. While Chris is saying that they brought them to life and gave them power. The soldiers begin to convulse and Chris begs to be brought back to the sim to save his men. The nurse agrees and brings him back inside, but tells him that his memory will be wiped. Chris wakes up in the woods and sees the apparition on the adjacent tree and asks what it wants. 